I am that I am. The beloved Saint Germain in the conscious act of Adamus. <laughs> Welcome to your Chambra. Welcome. Thank you. Let's take a good deep breath together as we begin this landmark shout. Landmark. Uh, it's going to be epic. It's going to be unusual. It's going to be something that uh, you'll remember uh, as a marker for a long time to come. Ah. I walk around. I, I love doing the walk around and seeing your beautiful eyes. Yes. Looking at each and every one of you, I, I look at you. <sighs> sometimes, sometimes it makes me laugh, and sometimes it makes me cry. <laughs> because you don't realize who you really are. It's this game, it's this gravity, maybe, that's been keeping you from really realizing. But I can look you in the eye, and I can see who you are. Very, very special indeed, for a lot of reasons, which we're going to talk about today. I see the being that was in the mystery schools with me a long time ago. I see the being that I asked, I said, you're, you're ready. You are so ready for your enlightenment. A long time ago I said this to you, and you said, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not that you weren't ready, but you wanted to come back at a very special time. Very special time. You said, I want to wait. Um, leaving the mystery school, you said, but I want to wait for the enlightenment till just the right time on the planet. And here you are now. I love doing this with the folks listening on the internet. Ah. But here you are now. Almost to say hand chosen or selected, there are a lot who I kicked out of the mystery schools. Oh, there are a lot. <laughs> uh, they really weren't ready. Uh, they were on a power trip or an ego trip. Uh, they weren't physically or emotionally ready yet. But all of you, all of you here, ready. And I said, then let's come back together in a few hundred years. <laughs> it's not so long. <laughs> it just seems that way. I said, let's come back together in a few hundred years at this epic time of the planet. I'll explain later what I mean by that. Let's gather together and first First, let's take some time uh, with a dear friend of mine known as Tobias. I'm going to have you spend some time with him to help heal some of the wounds, uh, to help you love yourself again, uh, to repair some of the damages that had been done from being in the, the human form. As enlightened and as brilliant as you are, Coming back to Earth, especially in this lifetime, has been very challenging, caused some issues. Some of you came back so quickly into old families, into the old karma. Uh, some of you came back into old relationships, which you uh, turned into marriages or, or partnerships, and a lot of wounds. So I said, spend some time with my dear friend Tobias. Uh, and many of you did remembering who you are with Tobias. He did such a brilliant job. Some of you still remember him so fondly, have such tender moments. Some, some of you came in after Tobias, but you spent the time with Tobias, and then when he was ready to incarnate back on Earth, then I came in. I came in to be here with a very small, select group of humans, you, who call yourself Chambra, who come from all walks of life, 
every different possible profession, countries all over the world. Uh, there's no other real common bond other than your realization in this lifetime. So I came back in to work with each and every one of you. And I see who you are, who you truly are. I know who you are. I just want you to see it now. I want you to see that same true angel, that enlightened human, the one who is not stuck in the mind, the one who's not stuck in their emotional issues anymore, and where the hell is my coffee? <laughs> I, I work for coffee. Uh, not pay, not anything else, just coffee, just a simple coffee. Where is Sandra when I need her? Where is Edith when I need somebody to give a hard time to? But like a master, you just take a deep breath and you realize, it'll come to me. It'll be here. Yeah, you might have had a hard time finding coffee on the break, but it'll be here. So, I do realize who you are. I know why you're here. I know, generally speaking, too, when you're going to make that incredible breakthrough that you've been waiting for. You know what it is, but you don't know how to get there. You, you can feel it as such an imminent, clear part of your life, but you don't know when it's going to be. You wake up in the morning and you wonder, is this the day? Is this when it comes? You, you struggle throughout the day, wondering, what am I doing wrong? What do I have to do next? When does this realization come? It's frustrating. Very, very frustrating. But a couple of points here. First of all, at a, uh, you could say, your divine uh, level, you're actually still waiting. Uh, you're not doing anything wrong. There is something inside of you that has been saying, not quite yet. Not quite yet. I, I know a lot of you will, will debate me on that. You'll get angry with me. Damn it! Damn it, Tadamas, I want it now. I've been asking for it now. Where the hell is it? Uh, you've been waiting. Waiting. You've been learning a lot. You've been still clearing some old issues, uh, which is good, but you're just waiting for the right time. I know who you are. I, I've worked with you before. I see who you are. You're not just that struggling human trying to make sense out of life, trying to come into uh, something called spiritual enlightenment, which you're really not sure what it is or when it'll happen. You're just waiting. So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep that there for, for a moment, and we're going to come back to that later. But I look out, and sometimes I have to laugh, and sometimes I have to cry. I, I, I laugh because it's like, you're going to realize how simple it all was, how you had kind of decided in an odd way to wait, uh, and you're going to realize that it wasn't actually a great big struggle. It was actually pretty simple. Uh, and I cry sometimes because of what you put yourselves through, physically and emotionally. And it just doesn't need to be so. It doesn't. You'll say, but Adamus, um, I, I don't have any control over what's happening in my body. Adamus, my mind, it goes crazy. I don't have any control over that. But let's just take a deep breath and go beyond that. Yeah, please. It comes to me. I don't come to it. It's uh, hot. It's hot. 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 Uh, hot doesn't bother me. I know hot. So, thank you. Pretty good. Sandra. Oh, 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 did I get the stink eye from her on the internet just now? Okay. So, where were we? Oh, I know where we were. So, I see who you are. I want to laugh. I want to cry sometimes. And if anything, uh, I just want to say, just relax into your enlightenment. Just relax into it. Don't make it such a struggle. Don't 
work so hard at it. Just relax. Uh, you're not going to think your way into it, and you're not going to force your way into it. So just relax into it. That's why we're here. Next, Linda on the microphone. Yeah, yeah, it's your turn. It's your turn. Linda on the microphone. Linda's going to take the microphone into the audience and give it to a volunteer. <laughs> she can see your hand go up even when it doesn't. Give it to a volunteer, and the question to begin this shout with is, how are you different now, today, than you were four years ago? How are you different now than you were four years ago? Yes, my dear. Oh, Adamus. I oh, Adamus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all different. It's all different. Uh, name three things that are different. Um, I'm very conscious. You're very con good. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I love. Do you? I love. Love what? All. <laughs> everything? Not everything, but, but I, I love life. Yeah, yeah. It's love life. Okay. Nice. No, no um, big challenges in your life right now? Yes, there are great challenges, but, but it's, it's good. It's okay. You like the great challenges? No, but uh, yes. <laughs> I, no, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, I, I, I love it because it's, um, um, I love to master it. Yes. Are you, uh, are you feeling better about yourself and life now than you were four years ago? Yes. Are you more clear now yes. than four years ago? Good. Are you happier now? Yes. Are you more yes. abundant? Uh, yes, kind of what's happiness. Are you more abundant now than yes. four years ago? Yes. Good. Good. And, and are you healthier physically? Um, not really. No, no, really. Why? Uh, because uh, there are some little um, body issues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, but to go to this, um, I'm going to say where we're going, it's important to be healthy. It's important yes. to have the body together. Yes. Can you give yourself that permission to have the body back in balance? Yes. Have you done ancestral freedom? Not yet. Give me that microphone. Give it to. Did I make my point or what? Uh, you'll you'll understand later. Please do it. Linda's going to gift it to you. Uh, she'll send you the link. So uh, it's free. It's on me. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I can't stress it enough. I'll talk about it in just a moment. Next, next. How are you different now than four years ago? Oh, oh, you can't hide. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Good to see you again. I'm really happy to be here. I was looking forward to it. Yes. And, but I didn't expect to stand here and to have to talk. Why? I, I just didn't expect. <laughs> well, what did you expect? Uh, yeah, did I you sit in the chair quietly during yes. a shout? Yes. <laughs> Good. I hope. I hope. Have you noticed that when you're just hoping that you stay small and nobody notices you, that's when you get the microphone? There's a very interesting dynamic in this. Um, I'll explain later in the shout. Uh, how is your life different than four years ago? Uh, when I look at my creativity, it's much different. Good. A lot different. Good. Uh, when I look at my uh, work, mm -hmm. the relationship the patients is really getting more intimate yes. and really deep. And when I look at my seminars, the energy is perfect. Good. Really perfect. How's your health? My health <laughs> is I did the ancestral freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna use you for a spokesman anymore. <laughs> How's your health? Why? Not so well. uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I was better before. Yeah. I was better before. More energy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Less pain. Yes. Okay. What's that about? Hmm. 
don't, don't say that. Don't say, I don't know. Make up something, lie to me, anything. Just that. Don't say, I don't know. Yeah. I am just on the spot to say, I don't know, but I don't say. It. Yeah. I mean, I, I have the feeling, I mean, I've done twice, twice short. Yes. And since that time, I have the feeling, I mean, yes, maybe it's normal. Everything is coming up, all the old stuff. Yeah. In the body, just in the body, because the rest is perfect. Yeah, good. So just the body. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for wanting to talk today. <laughs> Next. How are you different today than four years ago? Oh, boy. <laughs> Greetings, Master. Greetings. Yeah. Oh, I'm, you, you mean me different or the life in overall? How how was today? How you are today different than four years ago? What what's changed in your life? Oh, like everything. I changed the country where I'm living. I changed the job. Change uh, uh, much more abundant, much more creative. Good. I do what I love. Good. More clarity. Yeah, yeah, much more. Clarity. Okay. Would you want to go back to four years ago? No. No, no. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Man, not too painful. Yeah. Unless you give me the wrong answer. <laughs> Good. Oh, sure, sure. <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, how, how are you today compared to four years ago? Uh, I've just been thinking about it. Uh, I remember, but what I can say is I feel much, much less, if at all, of a victim. Oh, good, good. I Less of a victim. Yes, that was mm -hmm. quite a theme. Yes. And um, I feel a lot calmer mm -hmm. inside of me. Yes. And um, a lot, lot, lot more abundant. That's mm -hmm. normal and it's short. Good. And um, that really is a basic thing for many things. Mm -hmm. And um, how is your energy? My health, way, uh, my health is something that mm, is beginning to trouble me a bit. Mm -hmm. My heart. Mm -hmm. And um, a few other little things, which I think are maybe connected to the whole change right. and shift in general. So I haven't, I haven't seen a doctor for years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's if you ask me. That's the one thing that's coming up to my mind every now and then. That maybe there's something I should be aware of. How was your sleep at night? Oh, hardly any. Yeah. Um, okay. Honestly, yeah. I've given up. Um, being troubled too much for that because mm -hmm. I think okay, I've got the time I can afford it to to lie in maybe or just be a little more relaxed about it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get up at six o'clock every day. Um, so but it's it's surely there that something. Sometimes I think it's because of some uh, noise around me in the house in the block where well, I live. There's noise, but it's not necessarily yeah, on the outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes I wish I could, you know, blame that for it. Yes, but. Um, I feel that after an hour of sleep, that's something I've noticed. It is only an hour. I feel like I've done at least 10 hours sometimes. Right. Between 12 and 1 o'clock in the morning. Right. Or between 3 and uh, before 3. And it's virtually really that hour sleep. And I look at my uh, alarm clock and I can't believe it's only 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Right. This is what I've noticed. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I realized you said before... Uh, that, um, yeah, the meaning of the length of sleep that we all think we need is no longer valid. In, so that's something irrelevant. very reassured. Yeah. Assurance. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank and by you. the way, for those of you who are relieved that uh, the person sitting right around you got the microphone and you think Linda's going to walk away, she's not. <laughs> You're like, oh, good, good. I'm so glad uh, Gudrun got the microphone and, and now I'm not going to. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And, and how is your life different now than four years ago? Uh, well, I quit my former job. Yes. For one year ago. Yes. And uh, well, I am more satisfied with my life now. Mm -hmm. How how is all the mind uh, activity, the brain talk? It is less, more or less. Yeah. A lot less. Yeah, a lot less. Okay. Yeah. Good. Are you happier? Yes. Hmm? Uh, what's your biggest complaint? 
I need a new car, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Don't allow it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I, I know I say that, and then some of you are like, oh, you know. As I know, just <laughs> stop. Just allow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What kind of car would you would you get? In Audi. Audi, which which model number? Calder wants to know. I don't care. Three A, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. good, good, yeah. good, nice car. Yeah. He says, I don't know. <laughs> I still have my horses and carriages. <laughs> and I, I like I like those. Yeah, good. Thank you. A couple more, Linda. No problem. How is your life different now than four years ago? Lady with the glasses. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How's your life different? Um, I love myself much more than Love yourself. Before. Good. And that's no, did you have a problem with that before, loving yes, yourself? Yes, yes, yes. Why? I thought I, I, I'm not good enough for everything. Yeah. And now you're okay? Yes. Good. Good. And uh, what else is different than four years ago? Mm. I'm much more uh, relaxed. Much more relaxed. Yes. Good. How's your abundance? Mm. Did you listen to my abundance, my free abundance course? Yes. Good. Listen again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did a few days, days before. Yeah. Okay. A few days before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before today. Oh, you ju you just listened to it. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, it takes what uh, maybe a week for it to you know, bring in all the riches. So, so you know, don't be impatient. It was free anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how's your health? Good. Pretty good. Okay. Good. Yeah. No unusual aches or pains. No. Energy level. Um, it's good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, and you're filling in for Edith. Yes. Yeah. Her name is Edith. <laughs> well, Edith, what would I do without you? <laughs> but you, you didn't give me hell like Edith does. You didn't give me a hard time. And then you go, oh, Adamas. And then I'd say a bad word, oh, you have to swear Adamas. OK, two more, Linda. How is your life different than it was four years ago? Welcome. Thank you. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting comment. Because uh, I don't know when I have to make a decision, and it's quite complicated for my mind, and I say, forget it, heck, I allow. And, and, and it's... Everything seems to be working the whole day. Yeah. I didn't even plan to do this and that, and suddenly, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And this is what's happening now with me. Mm -hmm. And I get uh, discouraged once in a while with whatever. I have no idea what it Are is. Are you bored? Pardon me? Are you bored? Bored, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure, because <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm quite active. I'm quite active. Quite active. A yeah. And um, how is your energy level? Uh, at the moment, maybe five or six. Five or six. Okay. So kind from of ten, from okay. ten. Yeah. yeah. From ten. At okay. the moment. And your yeah. health? My health. Yeah, that was uh, a surprise because I was never sick before, and I had my uh, cataracts. Remove yeah, right. and uh, somehow it went a little bit uh, off, mm -hmm. out of order, and it was the first experience for me to realize when you are sick, how things are working. Oh, and yeah, I yeah. never had that before. And I said, "Whoa, yeah, yeah. yeah. not good." And, and not I good. said, "Oh, I'm allowing." But yeah. then, <laughs> but but these stupid things coming back again and said, "Woohoo." <laughs> wow! Hey, you, you, your doctor is not good enough. You have to go find out what to do and whatever. Yeah. And uh, it was crazy. And uh, so that's why my energy is like that, five yeah. and six or whatever. But allowing, 
is, is, is my, I don't know, I, I am driving and I said... How, how old are you? Oh, goodness. Wow. <laughs> how, um, how beautiful. Yeah. I will be uh, 73 in a few days. 73. And I pointed out... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because your, your vitality is much younger than a 73-year-old. Well, thank you. And, and you, you have such a youthful energy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. A few more, dear Linda. One more? One more. One more. Everybody's nervous. <laughs> Linda loves her role. L Linda loves being uh, the microphone angel. Yes. How's your life? It's okay, actually. It's okay. That sounds like <laughs> shit. Uh -huh. yes. nah. How is it compared to four years ago? Um, first of all, that whole ascension story feels way more far away, actually. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it feels also that everything is way more clear than back then. Yeah. Really end to end everything. Really. How's your energy? Depends. Yeah. Sometimes really good, and then suddenly really low. And, yeah. yeah. How is your overall, uh, you call it, joy of life? Now, we walk a lot also in nature, and that is really, really enjoyable. Yeah. And actually, I don't worry so much anymore like four years ago. That was really extreme back then, and mm -hmm. now I can really also enjoy little things. And yeah. Well, well. Good. So overall, better than four years ago? Worse? Different. or? Just different, different problems. Yeah. yeah, my mind is not working anymore. Ah, That's also your mind is out. Okay, yeah, yeah. good. Go ahead. That was also very really different. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you, Linda, for bringing the microphone around. Let's take a good deep breath with that. Life. Four years ago, for so many of you, you thought about it here while others were answering the questions. What's happened in the last four years? What's happened in the last 15 or 20 years? Or in the last year, for instance. Uh, this is not an easy process. So this is not a, this whole thing of awakening and enlightenment can be very, very challenging. There are expectations that you might have had a while back of what was going to happen in your life, and other things happened. You've let go of a lot of what I would say old issues, but you've encountered some other things along the way. One of them, probably the biggest one that I see with most of you, is your energy level. You don't have nearly as much inner conflict as what you had before. You're not having the great big battles uh, anymore. You're not, um, you're not tormenting yourself uh, in your mind nearly so much. There, there are still some times, of course. Uh, but one of the biggest things that I'm noticing is energy levels. And some days up, some days down, but overall it has nothing to do with getting a little older. It's just, um, well, it's a phenomena that you're going through and we're going to be addressing today. But I, I see that um, there is generally more um, love for yourself, more, you're more content with yourselves now than you were four years ago, definitely more than ten years ago. Content being not as many mind issues, but it's the energy thing. It's kind of trying to pull up the energy uh, for, for your business, your creative projects, for just your life for your relationship. And there's some stuck kind of energy there. We're going to address it today. But let me talk now about the last year, the last one year. It's been a tremendous, amazing year for Chambra and for me. And I have to say that it was very serious when I said earlier that you were in the mystery schools. You could have chosen your enlightenment back then by yourself, just going off to the Ascended Masters Club, and you didn't. You said, I want to wait. I want to wait for now. In the last year, we've really speeded things up. And 
Prior to that, um, I've invited people to leave Crimson Circle. I've said, if you're not here for embodied enlightenment, we invite you to leave. Uh, you could come back when you are ready. But this is not the place for people who are dabbling in spirituality. This is not a place for people who are doing energy feeding. I, I simply won't allow it. This is a place for people like each and every one of you that has chosen this lifetime for realization, period. Uh, I don't have tolerance for, and I don't think you have tolerance for, the ones who are just, you know, peeking through the windows, the ones who are just showing up to check it out, maybe feel the energy. For instance, today there is tremendous energy here uh, in, in the room. And it's a great place for energy feeders to come. Uh, you'll recognize them if they even could make their way in the door. They're into drama. They're into a lot of macchio. But basically, we've energetically kept them out. So we can do the very work that you came here for in this lifetime. I know you don't want it to be in another lifetime. You don't want to wait. You want it in this lifetime. So that's exactly what we're doing here together, me with you. Uh, um, I don't have a curriculum all laid out in my beautiful palatial office in the Ascended Masters Club. Uh, I haven't figured this all out in advance. We take it together as you uh, allow your enlightenment, as you expand your consciousness. Uh, that's why it's very difficult to... Uh, I can never really tell dear Caldra and Linda and the Crimson Circle staff what's going to happen next. Sometimes we walk in to do supposedly one type of workshop, and in that moment we change and do something different because it's all tailor, uh, custom designed for you and your embodied enlightenment. When I say that I, I see who you are and you don't yet realize it, uh, I see you who are so committed to something that uh, you committed to lifetimes ago, but you're going to do it in this lifetime, that is so different from any other, any other group of humans, any other uh, religious or spiritual or New Age group. I, I don't know if you recognize the difference. Uh, if you don't, just for fun, go to um, just a general New Age gathering sometime. Uh, or a weekend retreat for um, you know, some type of uh, metaphysical thing, you'll suddenly realize how far you have come and also how far we have come. In the last year, we've been going at quantum, um, I don't want to use speed, but we've been uh, in a quantum accelerated energy process. We started off uh, one year ago, almost to the date, uh, one year ago, at the uh, Cryon Conference in Sedona. Uh, and I work closely with Cryon at times, particularly when we're sharing a stage. And I talked to the Cryon uh, prior to that event. There was about eight, nine hundred people there. It was a huge event. and. I knew it was time to say something important to that audience, but particularly to you. I checked with the Cryon in advance and I said, here's what I'm going to talk about, uh, just to make sure that it was comfortable with the whole consciousness of that gathering. And I made a statement, uh, a very strong statement, and I said, the new age is over. It is over. That's not exactly the greatest venue, the greatest place to make that announcement. Uh, Sedona <laughs> is um, New Age uh, central uh, for United States and, and actually for a lot of the world. It's also Macchio central. It's not my favorite place to go. But I did make that announcement. I said, the New Age is over, uh, meaning that it's time to stop talking about it. It's time to stop uh, exploring all the different modalities and methods, and it's time 
to wrap that up. Uh, Blavatsky and, and Jung and Steiner and uh, a few others were so instrumental in starting the New Age 140 years ago. Uh, it, it was a time when the world needed new thinking and a new approach uh, to dive into uh, mysticism and spirituality in a way that none of the churches were providing and really none of the other religions were providing. But it came time for the New Age to close. And basically in closing to say, it's either time to go back to ordinary, regular life as a human, or it's time to come into your enlightenment. Uh, it's time to be that embodied master on earth. So that started a very um, fast-paced process. And I realized I wasn't invited back again this year. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> then last summer we did the Ancestral Freedom. Uh, I know many of you have uh, listened to it or watched it. It's not a pleasant um, program. It's not a pleasant cloud class, uh, I guess you call them. It's difficult. It wasn't very long, uh, but it's very difficult because I knew it was time to let go of that final imbalanced karmic connection to old family. Many of you uh, who went through that and experienced it had weeks or, or even months afterwards of challenges, challenges in the body, and in relationships, sadnesses, because it was letting go of old relationships uh, that were not really in balance with you anymore. It was holding you back. And it wasn't meant to say, walk out on your family or divorce your spouse or throw your children out the door um, in, into the world. It was meant to say that you've had a very long, long lineage with uh, the biology and the, the mindset of a family that you may love, uh, you, you may hate, it doesn't really matter, but it's time to let that go. You can't drag that into enlightenment. You can love them. You can have compassion for them, but I invited all of you to look at your ancestral background. Uh, and it was difficult for, for many of you, and I know there were some physical issues that went in, but that was the, the next step that we took. Then we started the Walk On series. This is number 10 in the Walk On, and it, it, for some reason it just seems like number 3, like we just started it, because it's going fast. We've delved into, we've dived into a, a lot of material this year. We, we've gone into a lot of issues uh, in the in the past nine shouts. Then it came the time for the the Bon Adventure uh, in Hawaii. Uh, the Bon Adventure was a wonderful, beautiful workshop. But what happened there was really very important. I told the group, uh, and I believe it was the second day, I said, this is the first time at Chambre that we've met. It was the first time that we've met, and the overlying um, energy uh, was not about issues and problems. We've had hundreds and hundreds of gatherings over the years, but generally what happened is that Chambre came in with their problems. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, they're silent problems. They didn't come in uh, crying at the door. They didn't come in demanding uh, answers to their, to their issues. But it was there. It was like a cloud hanging over the entire gathering. I had to work with it. Tobias had to work with it also. But it was energetically in your way. Uh, the human issues, the, the basic ones, abundance, health, uh, relationships and self-worth. And some of you had really been struggling with that, and particularly, particularly relationships. And that's why I felt that ancestral freedom was so important. But at that gathering was the first time it wasn't the, the overriding, the big issue. That was a huge breakthrough, not just for that group, but 
It was indicative of all Shambra. It was representative of all of you. And it happened again recently when we were in Italy. Both Threshold and the Amyo retreat, with both of them, the overriding energy wasn't problems uh, in your life. Uh, you know, those human struggling, almost unsolvable problems. Now we could really walk on. We could really make a lot of progress. It's been speeding up uh, at, at literally a quantum level. It's one of the reasons why so many of you are feeling exhausted in the body. You know, the, the mind thing goes back and forth, but what I really noticed here in this show today is the, the energy level, the, the physical issues. It's, it's had an effect, this light speed on the body. It's had an effect. The good news is that it's not permanent and it's not going to keep getting worse. Uh, but I can tell that it's had an effect. So the, it's been a very, very fast year. A lot of things happening in this year. And when you look at what we've talked about, what we've covered this year, right, just stop for a moment, and the magnitude of it. This year we've taken on darkness and said that darkness is an illusion. Well, that's in itself is enough for, for about two lifetimes worth of work. Uh, and we recently did it. Darkness is absolutely an illusion. If you believe in it, then it's going to be there and it's going to affect your life and it's going to put things into a lot of imbalance. You're always going to be afraid of or fighting the darkness. Once you rise above that illusion and realize there really isn't darkness, uh, and particularly in your life, you can, you can move on be, beyond all of those struggles. It is truly an illusion. There are people who will fight for darkness, who will insist on light and dark, on uh, angels and devils. And let them, let them. It's their game to play, but let's, us, we moved uh, beyond that. We're moving beyond death itself. We talked about it extensively the other day at the Amyo retreat. Everybody showed up wanting the good life, and what did I do? Talk about death. <laughs> <laughs> but death is such, um, such an issue for humans. The belief in death. There is no death. Uh, but yet humans insist on it. They look at a body in a coffin, and they say, well, obviously Adamus is wrong. Uh, they, they see their friends, their relatives, their parents, their brothers and sisters dying. And they say, well, that's going to happen to me. Everybody says, sooner or later, you're going to die. That actually is not true. There is a transition of the physical body, and the Master understands that someday they're going to absolutely integrate, bring their physical body into their body entire body of consciousness. But there's no death. There's no death. It's a transition. You are more alive than ever, particularly with the understanding of the I exist. You realize that this, this what has been called death, which is really a transition of the biology, transition of the biology. And it doesn't have to be the, the kind of ugly death people have been experiencing. But you come to realize that you're more alive than ever when you make that transition. I, I told the group at Amyo the other day, so many Shambra have said, this is going to be my last lifetime on this planet. Uh, and I take that to mean the last lifetime going through the process that you've had to go through now, the last lifetime where you are birthed the last lifetime where you forget who you were, the last lifetime where you're uh, living in the cloud, uh, the, the dark shadow actually, of mass consciousness and all of its unpleasant things like lack of abundance, like disease, like wars and famine and all the rest of that. But I told the group the other day that you're going to be, you have the option or the choice to be the first that are going to be coming back if you choose, without going through birthing, you can choose to 
integrate yourself into a, a printed body, uh, a nano body, uh, or you just simply manifest your your light body for a few days at a time. But when you've talked before about never coming back, you mean in the old way. There are new ways to come back and experience this planet without having to go through the old system to do it. There are ways to experience the beauty of the nature of this planet and good, healthy relationships on this planet without having to do it the old way. You're going to be the first that are going to be doing that. Now, the Ascended Masters uh, came in, it was a little bit different. Uh, they, they went generally through the birthing process with a few kind of exceptions like Tobias uh, with the shell body, but he still went through the human uh, patterns to come back. If you choose, you be the first ones that really transcend the meaning of death. The meaning of death is that your body dies, usually of some disease or an accident, and that you come back for another lifetime, but you've forgotten who you are. You'll be the first that have the potential to really defy death, because you come back without birth. You come back and know exactly who you are. You come back and not have the gravity of mass consciousness pull you into things that you know just aren't right, in, into other people's dramas, into abundance issues, into a wide variety of things. So when I've heard you, uh, and Tobias always heard you say, uh, never coming back, we kind of knew that you were saying, not the old way. We're going to create the new way. We're going to change the consciousness of death on this planet. And you're doing that. You're absolutely doing that. And each and every one of you will have the opportunity, has everything you need for embodied enlightenment in this lifetime and the transcendence of death to where you can come back here however you want, whenever you want, and truly enjoy life the way it should be. So this year, we've, in our quantum uh, consciousness opening, we've gone beyond death. We've gone beyond God. That was a tough one, uh, because Linda was always giving me a hard time about it. How can I say that about God and Jesus? We've talked about God. And we looked, uh, we've talked about it many other years, but this year we really said this old God just isn't going to work anymore. And we weren't afraid to say it. We didn't worry about, you know, the lightning bolt uh, coming in. God is a joke, a bad human joke. It's a reflection of human consciousness. It has nothing to do with the divine or spirituality. The people that have uh, created this man-god did, did not have a divine experience, because then you don't write uh, lame books about it. <laughs> we've taken on uh, the churches. Uh, we've taken on religions. We've even taken on the New Age uh, with a lot of macchio. And we said, that is not God. That is not Spirit. Spirit, God, is right here. I am God also. We've said no more to some of these scary old belief systems, to karma, to sin, to, uh, all, to uh, penance and suffering. It, it's not, this is not meant to be. It's time for these things to change on this planet. And it's not going to change through uh, lectures and books. It's going to change by a few humans like you going beyond, creating the whole new template for this planet. This past year, we took on power. Power. Most humans believe in power. They don't question power. Life is a game of power. You either have it or you don't. If you have it, you're always afraid of losing it, so you try to get more. If you don't have it, you're always wishing that you would get it, and you're afraid of the people that are powerful. Power is 
an illusion. It's an absolute illusion. It doesn't exist anywhere other than human consciousness and the human mind. Other than that, it doesn't exist. And we said, let's walk on. Let's go into the powerless life. Because in a powered life, there's always forcing. There's a harshness. There's always um, a fear in a, in a power life. It's looking outside rather than looking inside. There's no need for power. But people don't understand energy and consciousness. So they go after power instead. Power is everywhere on the planet. It's in businesses, of course. It's in religions and churches, absolutely in the government. It's in therapy. It's in the pharmaceutical industry. It's in everything. This world operates on power. Power. And it's actually interesting because the whole dynamic with fossil fuel, old fuel, is such a reflection of this whole consciousness of power. You have to explode something to move it forward. You have to have force and dynamics. And basically, the planet isn't going to find the real energy solution as long as it believes in power. We've taken it on. And the words come through me, from me through Caldra, but there are, it's your consciousness that's coming through. It's your saying no more to death, no more to this belief in darkness, no more to the old God. We've changed. You've changed in one short year. We've taken on time and space. That's a big one. We've said time, space. Move through you. It's not you moving through a linear projection through time and space. Time and space moves through you. It's such a simple physics. Uh, it's almost hard for me to imagine that uh, the scientists and uh, the physicists haven't gotten that. It's so simple, it's revolutionary. And when they finally get it through their uh, human brains, it'll change uh, the, the whole understanding of science and God and power and everything else. But right now they're locked into it. But you are changing that. You are some of you have absolutely felt it. Other you, of you have that knowingness that time and space are moving through you. You're the master. You're not at the mercy of time and space. Speaking of which, time in particular, history. History is a sequence of time. We've talked about, we're actually uh, even defying history. History is basically a, a linear human story. These events happened on these dates, and people believe it without questioning it. Say, so, well, you're crazy if you don't believe what's written in these books. We're coming to understand that history is an is a aspect of time. And that time is flexible. You don't have to be trapped in linear time anymore. And that when you take a look at your past, at your history, that actually it's not necessarily what your mind remembered. It's not necessarily what was even written in the books. And uh, people will challenge that and say, well, you got, you're crazy. You know, this is what happened. But the Master comes to discover that uh, it's very flexible, that what happened in the past can be changed, uh, the perspective of it, and, and also the understanding of all the dynamics that went in. You're not locked into time. You're not locked into your history anymore. And even the other day, we took on love uh, at the uh, the Amyo retreat. We talked in depth about love. Now, a lot of times when I hear people talk about peace, love, and joy, I want to vomit. Um, <laughs> it's a macchio cliche. And I say that because they really don't understand what these things are. Uh, they're, they're, they're saying it from almost a hypnotic standpoint peace, love, and joy. We talked in depth about love uh, and 
about, about true, deep love, what it really is. We've taken on uh, the biggest issues in the last year, and you've been an integral part of all these things. We've moved at this light speed, and uh, you'll know that in the last couple of years, I've been talking uh, almost uh, ad nauseum until uh, you get bored about your five human senses uh, and, and the mind, saying that these things create the perspective of your reality. Your mind, your human senses give you the perspective of reality, but that's not all there is. Let's move forward. Let's expand that. Let's go into the master's sense, uh, which is very, very different than any human sense uh, and the mind. Let's begin exploring what else is already here. So in this last year, with a lot of talking about the senses and about the going beyond the mind, we've done that. We've started opening, you started opening the master's sense. It's still coming. You're still, some of you question if it's there or if you're doing it right. It's going to come. It's, don't work at it, really. Don't, don't effort with it. Just feel into it and allow it. We've done an incredible amount this year, and there's a lot more to come. A tremendous lot, good lot to come. There's a lot more to come, and, uh, and what I wanted to talk about today is something actually very, very special. Something I noticed uh, about uh, 10 days ago in assessing, looking at the, the Chambre energy. And I realized that for the first time ever, it was a, it was a revelation, for the first time ever, that the, your energies have shifted in a tremendous way. And I'm going to ask Linda to write this on the, on the board, <laughs> our virtual board. <laughs> Just for Linda. There was an amazing breakthrough recently. Um, it was a shift in your consciousness. Some of you are probably more aware of it than others, but it was a shift in the consciousness that is the first real um, breakthrough in the and. In the and. We've talked about it for a while, the fact that you're a human and you're a master. But suddenly I observed this shift. It was almost like watching, um, watching you, your energy field, uh, your, which, your consciousness, your energy. It was almost, uh, you could say, like an egg shape. And uh, you've been in that egg shape for a long time. Uh, you've been feeling a lot of things, experiencing. I mean, your life is changing. Some ways it gets better, some ways a little bit more difficult. But Suddenly, about 10 days ago, uh, a radiance out of that old, hard-shelled uh, egg shape into the and, into the and. It wasn't just a few of you. Uh, it, it was a lot of you. And it's indicative of the fact that then it will come to the rest. Most of you probably weren't aware of it. You didn't wake up um, nine days ago and say, oh, suddenly I'm in the end. But it was a perceivable shift. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to write it this way, because it's difficult to put into words, but I'm going to say, what I noticed was that you were becoming powerless, power-less, Linda, and energy rich. Energy rich. That's why I was asking earlier, what, what difference have you noticed in your life? How is your energy level? Your energy level has been, you've been consuming a lot of energy these last four years. 
we've been consuming a lot the last year in particular, it's affecting your body. Uh, not as much your, your thoughts, but it's really been affecting the body, your, your overall vitality. But suddenly with this shift occurring and getting out of the old consciousness of power and making that shift into the and, suddenly there's a new richness of energy. I'd like you to feel it for a moment here. Imagine again, here you are as the, the human, uh, the mind, the five senses, and such a deep desire to move beyond those, but at times so difficult, uh, it couldn't break through. You, you, you heard my words, you got frustrated with me because it wasn't happening in your life. You, you heard about the and, or we talked about abundance, or the master sense, but you're like, damn it, when's it going to happen? And then I noticed it started to happen, again about ten days ago. What this will mean, what this will lead to, is eventually being in a conscious state of and, not just thinking about it intellectually or philosophically, but really being in the conscious state of and. You are the human. It was never designed that we were going to perfect the human. Uh, it was never meant that the human was the one who um, ascended by their human self. It was never meant that we were going to create the ideal, perfect human. Never. The human is the human. The human has its biologies. It has its uh, interesting ways of doing things. It was all about opening into the and, the master also. Uh, and that is actually what you've been doing. When that happens, there is a tremendous release of the need for power. Uh, you've been powering through most of your life. You still use power on a tremendous uh, regular basis in your life. But you're suddenly realizing that it's not, it's not where you want to go. It's not, it's not going to get you what your real heart's desire is. So you've been actually releasing that. And as you did, as you are doing that, it opens the way for energy, rich, rich energy, to come into your life. It's very, it's a, it's a landmark, it's a milestone, because in the past, if you had large amounts of energy, you would have used them in a power way. So you kind of stayed away from it intentionally. Kind of like, I'm not ready yet, so I'll stay away from it. But now you're comfortable and trusting enough in yourself. You're at a point where you're saying, uh, this is all going to come together very soon. It's time to come into an energy-rich life. Four years ago, you would have said, I might abuse or misuse that energy and called it power. Four years ago, you might have said, um, it's going to throw me out of balance to be energy rich. Uh, but now, now it's changed. And that was the beautiful thing to observe. I, I had a whole different shout I was thinking about doing, but after that it was like, now we can really, really walk on. I want you to feel for a moment into this whole expansion Here's the human, uh, as I say, like a like a egg shape almost, and fighting uh, to, or working so hard for enlightenment, consciousness, and then suddenly, actually, when you give up the fight, when you stop trying so hard, suddenly it starts opening up, expanding. The egg is still there; that egg shape of energy is still there, but suddenly there's another layer. And it's not the human egg, it's, it's what you would call the master, the divine. And that brings a richness 
of energy. Energy that isn't harsh. One of the reasons a lot of you stayed away from energy is because if you had a big issue in your life, the last thing you want to do is bring more energy into that issue. If you had an abundance problem, you bring energy into it, you're going to have a bigger abundance problem or a bigger health problem or a bigger relationship problem. So you avoided energy in an interesting way because uh, it, well, it was power energy. It was old energy. But you finally said, no more. I'm going to shift now. And you allowed it to happen. It's the and. That's, that's, that's the master. I am human. And I am the master. I, I am intelligent and I'm kind of stupid too. I'm, I have a tremendous sense of humor and I'm so serious. I am a light body and I am a physical body. You might wonder why it took so long to get here. <laughs> There were a lot of issues. There were a lot of things you were still holding on to. And you said, actually, we're not quite ready. Not quite ready. There's some other things happening on the planet. Not quite ready. We want to time this just so beautifully. And now it's opening up. So now, Let's stop talking about it and let's experience it in this thing that we call the mirab. We'll turn the audience lights down. Please get comfortable. Powerless and energy rich. During this mirab, I'd like you to really experience the richness of energy. Feel it. Feel it in that physical body of yours. And, but I want you to notice one very, very important quality about it. It's not like the old energies that you've been used to, what I call force energy, harsh. Uh, sometimes where you just wanted to, it's like, you needed to tune it down, tone it down. These are different energies. It's rich in its um, grace. It's rich in its ease. It's not going to be hard on your body or your mind. So take a good deep breath and let's come into this mirab. This is our time of shifting consciousness, moving from one state to the other. I've talked a lot about the and at Kihak starting uh, the year before and going into this year. I've talked about it with Shambra. You get it intellectually. You, you understand it. It's not real hard. It's three letters, hard to even misspell. And, A-N-D. And you could feel into it, but there was um, resistance, I, I would say, or reluctance, perhaps. There's been so much focus on the human self, on you, on making you better. It's almost hard to imagine now going into and, just another you. <laughs> but it's not. It's so beautiful to watch when you move from uh, an intellectual, philosophical, spiritual concept and then finally start experiencing it in your body and your reality. That's what happened about 10 days ago. There's you, the human, and there's this other master, I guess you could call it, free self, divine. 
And you didn't say, well, okay, if this master is here, I need to be rich. I need to be healthy. You didn't say that. Because you realize that's oh so human. You didn't try to apply power to this and self. You didn't make it try to come in and fix the human. You just felt into it and there's so much more to me. And why, why would I have to take this and make the human better? I'm now divine and human. There is a huge shift away from power. And when that happened, it opened the door for energy, new energy, the kind that we've been talking about for years, rich energy, simple energy. It doesn't carry the old attributes of duality or, or power. There's a richness to it, and it doesn't just come and go. You don't have to worry about losing it. You don't have to force it into your body to heal it or force it into abundance issues. It's richness in itself. Powerless energy rich. Take a good deep breath. Oh my, what a fast year it's been. Bumpy at times, but it's like going out for a, like a joy ride, going faster than you could imagine. What a thrill, a bit frightening, but We've come a long way in this one year, to the point now, even before we finish this Walk On series, we can talk about energy richness. I know a few of you out there are saying, who, me? <laughs> you mean me? Yeah, I mean each and every one of you. Listen to the music for a moment and feel into this, this coming into the and. Not just the thinking of and, but the experience of it. Take a good deep breath as the music plays.
something shifted recently. It's the beginning of, I guess, a lot of more shifts, but the true realization of the and, the master, and the human. The walking away from the need for power in your life. And that brought in rich energy. How will it show up in your human life? We'll see over the course of the next month or year. But it will definitely, it will definitely change when I ask the question that I asked today, how is your life different? In four years, if I asked that, or a year I asked that, you look back with amazement. Something really big shifted. Now the energy is just there, and it's rich, and it's not harsh. You don't have to fight with it. Now the single human, the linear human, is now the and, the many. Something big shifted. You did it through allowing. Well, if there's anything that I'd like you to remember me for when my time comes to move on, if there's anything I'd like you to remember me for, it's two simple words, allowing and and. Allowing. That's what you do. You will allow your enlightenment. You allow yourself. You, the I am. We can't think our way through this. We, you can't get out of your mind from the mind. There's no tricks. There is no secret passageways. It's all about allowing. Allowing what's natural in the first place. And then the and. The fact that it was never intended to be to enlighten the human. It was to realize the enlightenment of the Master and still being the human and so much more. We haven't even begun to discuss that. But right now, let's take a good deep breath. There's nothing to work at here. Sometimes I talk about where we're going next, but today I'm talking about what I just saw happen. Powerless and energy rich. Can you feel it in your own self? I'm not the mental stress feeling, but can you just feel it within yourself for a moment? as the music plays. It's been kind of a, almost a energy starvation going on for a long time now. An energy richness.
It's happening right now in the room. It's happening right now for those of you watching in. A natural shift out of power into energy richness in your life. It's happening because you're allowing it. It's happening because we're gathered here together. Not because of the words I'm saying, but simply because you're allowing it. I want you to really feel this energy richness now, between now and our next shout. Not thinking about it, but really feeling it. How it touches every part of you, the human, and every part of you, the master. It's there. You did it. You made that really historic shift. So let's take a good deep breath together here in Shaud 10. And as always, my dear friends, as always, remember that all is well in all of creation. Thank you.